Hello and welcome to episode 2 of the route building series from Wetfield to Nottingley. Episode 2 we're going to be continuing the feeder lines which is these two here. The main two running lines all the way from Crofton West across towards Nottingley. Uh, see how far we get in an hour or so in this episode. Um, episode 1 we basically did some terrain work, we did this bit of track here and some signalling. And we're going to now continue that onwards up the hill so we're at the end of the level track section as you may remember. From here the line climbs uh, to Crofton Depot, there's a little leather section there, then it, uh, it climbs quite steeply towards Charleston and uh, Street House before dropping down towards Featherston. So first of all we've got 675 metres, a gradient of 112, uphill 1 in 112, so we're going to put 112 in the box, double track set, and uh, track concrete 1. We haven't got easements on, on this curve, we'll be putting them on the next curve certainly. And we're going to carry this on. 675 metres, it's uh, double trace, one in 112, so that's 435. So another 240 is needed. Now I can see that the straight starts somewhere here. Let's see if that's going to be straight enough. Yep, that looks like it's going to do the trick. Now I know the summit is somewhere around this bridge and I'm just going to go on to Flickr because you can see quite clearly on Flickr if you go to Crofton East Junction uh, where that summit is. So uh, in terms of gradients it sort of peaks, just looking at a photo now literally as it gets to the bridge so about here somewhere is where the summit is before the junction. This curve is the bit that legs back around to the middle and then goes over the top of where we've been building in episode 1. And um, we'll be doing that in a future episode. So first of all we need to measure out 675 metres to see if we've laid enough. So we go to the point where we uh, levelled off. Let's uh, measure up, select the track tool, just drag it along. I don't think we've laid enough. Oh, we have laid enough. So according to our system, the summit should be there. But it could be, because I've laid all this track on uh, Manchester's leads and stuff, that I'm a little bit slightly out. So it looks like, gradients wise, I might be about 100 metres out. Um, so I'm going to carry, I think the right thing to do in this situation is to carry on a little bit further until we know where the summit is and it sort of levels us off a little bit more at the correct location. So we'll carry it on to about here. And what I can do is I can actually go into a height above sea level map. Uh, called an elevation finder and this will pretty accurately give you a, a feel of what the ground height is at that location obviously you spread it over a bit of a wider area to uh, get that info out um, so we're just looking for where Wakefield is, there's Wakefield Kirkgate for some reason blind in the entire universe. So we're built by building up here. So that's our Wakefield. And on this map, where's the full screen button? So this map you can actually see quite clearly where we've been looking. And um, labels can be turned on. Hold on survey map. So we've just been building there in episode one. We're now on this curve here and going up past Crofton Depot. So what I'm going to do is going to click here and see if I can find out exactly what the height is. So it says 42 metres, 42 metres. We should find as we go in this direction that it drops a bit. 40 metres, 39 metres, 39 metres. So the ground height there is 42 metres roughly. You're talking 42, 43 around the depot. So I, I think the track, if there's a wide area like that at 42 metres, the track in theory should also be 42 metres. And at this point, where the summit actually is, yeah, it has uh, corrected itself back to being about 42 metres. So, so now we're going to the next bit of track. I've gone up and just done a bit of terrain work and stuff just to prepare for this bit. So we need to be on our gradient of 1 in 647, not 64, as I had it set then. I'm going to turn the easements off for this. I had them on already. Uh, I'll put them on once we get past this crossover. So we're just going to go across the crossover. That's Crofton Depot. 
Uh, originally, that was a coal yard in the steam, you know, until steam days. It became a track depot from then onwards, engineer's depot. Uh, and then from the 2000s onwards, it's uh, had a big resurgence with the Voyagers going testing there. It's a Bombardier depot. Uh, the Voyagers went testing there after they came out of Harvey Works. And now there's all sorts based there. There's 180s, Voyagers, uh, and Transpanning 185s go there for servicing. It's a really busy old place nowadays compared to what it used to be uh, when it was just a track depot. So we've got the easement selector now, we've got the passenger selector so I can do a tighter curve because if you look on mainline, the curve's not going to be tight enough. We can't make the curve sharp enough what it actually needs to be. So we've got to put it on passenger so that you can see the white line there leading us into the curve so we can work out what to do with it. Then when we get to here, it's going to need to sharpen up a little bit more as well. In fact, it's probably going to be a bit too sharp that. We can carry it on around this part. And the house that I've put on the trailer that marks where the uh, 1 in 647 ends. So we mark that there. So next up it's a 1 in 112 gradient. And this one goes on for 1061 metres. 111 gradient actually. And again we need to set this a passenger. Now the reason I've done this bit of terrain work is because I was really struggling to... Well... The real reason I did this is because I did this track already once, then realised I hadn't pressed record. So I had to come back and redo it. Um, so I've, I've redone the track now, which is what I'm doing. But I couldn't work out the trajectory of that straight, so that marks out roughly where the uh, straight should start uh, to go along towards Charleston Colliery, where that used to be. So we're just coming up towards Charleston Common at the minute here. as we go around this curve I bet that if I put it in here it's going to be uh, slightly off still and it is if you look it's, it's slightly too far to the right I can't actually I'm struggling to get it round I'll be honest um, try again as I said on the bit I forgot to record uh, I'm doing this warts and all because in a tutorial, as I said in episode 1 as well, if you're doing a tutorial, you can't show these things really because it becomes uh, far too set up if you're not careful. And it's just not a real situation. If you're doing a tutorial, everything's usually perfect because you're doing a tutorial. With this, I hope that it can build people's confidence in thinking, understanding that, you know, you have to learn somewhere and mistakes happen. I mean, I'm making right cock-ups of this, but I'm having to keep coming back and doing it. Um, it's very frustrating. That's, that, that's the third time there alone that I've just gone and laid that piece of track. And I've, I'd already done it, but on my, on my version that got deleted. Well, it didn't get deleted. It didn't get recorded. I did it about four or five times. So, what I'm trying to do is work out where the straight should go, but if you look, every time I'm doing it, I'm getting it slightly skewed on one part to be honest this time uh, we're still slightly too far to the right if you look at that so we'll have to do it again and sometimes I mean uh, when I was doing some track with like some of the straights like three miles long uh, I was doing some track earlier this year and it took me about two hours to do a straight because it was such a long straight I shouldn't be making such a meal of this one to be honest Bit disappointed in myself for uh, how long this one's taking me because it wouldn't normally take me this long for a, a straight that's only, I don't know, half a mile wide. Maybe it's because I'm trying to concentrate on talking at once. We'll see. Is that got it this time? No, this time we're too far. This time we're too far to the other side. Okay, I'm going to cut the recording until I've uh, actually managed to get this straight lined up because otherwise it's going to be a full hour of just me trying to do one curve.
So we're back okay, here. so about 50 attempts later, I finally managed to line this straight up where it should be. So I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the height of the track where it should be. I believe it's in the correct location. So happy overall where we're doing so far. So next up, we've got to do some gradient smoothing because we didn't smooth this gradient off here where we started today on episode two. So we're going to smooth this off by selecting around the track. Fair side, a fair distance either side so that we lose that big dip there. Like that. Now there's no big lump in the track. Levels off uh, fairly uh, steadily. Now, from real life, I know that this one is quite a sharp, um, quite a sharp sort of uh, drop off. I'm actually going to put a photo of my dad's on the screen. You can sort of see it on the back of the photo. So this photo that will come on the screen in a second was taken by my dad. Um, with the early 1990s, late 80s, maybe. Was whenever, about 89, something like that. November 1990, this photo was taken. So, this is taken with the crossing at Crofton East, and you can see the road bridge in the background there. But you can see towards the back of that train just how sort of uh, pronounced that gradient summit is. It's not that much, obviously, but uh, it's fair, fairly pronounced sum. So, from the foot crossing that photo was taken, the road crossing, so it's just here. So we need to try and recreate that scene there. Uh, we're going to do the smoothing before this point comes in here. So I would say start there somewhere. Oh, oh, we didn't mean to move the track. And it wants to, I'd say the something wants to end before it hits the road bridge because you don't really have road bridges on a hill sort of thing. So I would say it needs to end there somewhere. And then we'll see what happens when we press the smooth tool, which is up here. Let's have a look from the crossing. And yeah, I'd say that's about right. Because I know when you stood here, you can't actually see down the hill. You sort of just see the nose of the loco coming up over the top. So then we also turned easements on here somewhere. And now, if I were to set this track to be super elevated right now, we'd hit major problems because... The section between the red triangles is judged as one section of track. So if I turn super elevation on here, all the section between that red triangle and that red triangle would be super elevated. Now a TS rule is you can't have super elevated track where there's point work. And we've got a lot of point work going on, we've got two sets of junctions. So what we need to do is we need to split the track before the curve on a straight piece of track. You've got to split it on a straight, and you've got to split where there's not any points. So there's no points here, so we can split it, hold the split tool, drag it across there. Hit the weld tool, hit the two grey boxes, and then you'll notice we now have these two tri red triangles. So that, that means when I set this section to be super elevated, it'll only do to the right of those red triangles that we've just put in, where are they? Where have they gone? There they are. So it'll only apply to this section, beyond the, on our side of the red triangles, it won't apply to that section. So we've just put in an extra break in the track there to make it possible to do super elevation. Um, and you could put it right by these points if you wanted to, but there's no need to. So you put it there somewhere, it's easier. So now we need to look for the point where the 1 in 6, 4, 7 gradient ends, because we've got to smooth that off yet, and that's here. We'll make a nice long sort of uh, approach into this one because this, I know in real life, isn't that noticeable to be honest. So if you go up the side there, there, hit that, and you can't, you can't even really see now. That goes from one in six four seven to one in one one two, without even being able to really tell where it goes. And then we've got all the way there. That's the end of the one in one hundred twelve right up there. So the next job on this bit. Super elevation, so we've got to super elevate that curve and the following one just beyond it. Um, and I'm just going to put an extra break in here because I don't like super elevating up to the end of the buffers, obviously. So you've got a break in there, All right? So, first off, turn off Google Maps, we don't need that on for now. What we're going to do is we're going to select this track. 
for the whole section that we want to super elevate. I always do it one track at a time. You can do multiple tracks, but I find I just prefer for whatever reason to do it singularly. Maybe I'll trial it in this series, actually doing it twice. So when I hit this button, I've highlighted the track. This window's flown out from the right. I always pin it. We need to hit that button there to make the track super elevated. And if you look at the track, you'll see when I hit it that the gradient, the track will sort of lean into the curve there. So you can sort of see as I'm doing that, it's leaning. It's making the curve super elevated. So now when you go into here, the trains all have, have a really nice lean on them. And the same for this one, because it's applied to both cur both those two curves. It's applied to that one and that one. Uh, and then as we come out of it, because we've split it here nicely on a straight piece of track, there's no bumps or anything. It's nice and level. Again, select this outside track. Make sure we do both of them, obviously. A bit stupid, just do one. And this obviously I'm overly on it because it's the inside track. So like that. So now we get a train through there and it's going to have some fantastic looking uh, cant on it. So we've got those two curves in. Got this one straight in. This is uh, Charleston cutting uh, as it goes across Charleston Common towards where Street House is. Street House Station being the first of our stations on this route. So we've done 1,061 metres at 1 in 111. We now do 145 metres at 1 in 408. And basically what this is, for all intents and purposes, is the summit of the climb. It's the top of the hill, essentially. Leaving the easements on because we're coming down this hill here. And there's a super elevated curve at the bottom. So we've got, what was it, 145 metres? I was blabbering that much that I didn't... Pay attention. There we are, 145 meters. So that goes to there. So that's now the summit of the climb. And what we'll do is we'll make that into a ridge to basically a broad summit. Uh, you can see in real life. Let's see if I can find a photo of that as well. Um, if you go there in real life, you can really clearly see the summit on this one as well. So next up, 321 metres at minus 150 is the next gradient for us. So we need to put a minus in this box now, so we're going downhill, so minus 150. And we're doing it for 321 metres. So we need to continue the track on. And we need to put some more terrain moulding into there by the looks so we can actually see what we're doing so I'll level the terrain off and it's 321 metres at minus 150 Because we're going downhill, probably I'm going to need to modify the terrain a bit more, to be honest. So what we can do here is, because obviously we can see the terrain's getting really low, you can go into here and you can click the level button. And this will actually set the terrain to a certain level, so it's 52 metres at the moment, let's set it to 45 um, for this section. And we'll come back and repair all this afterwards before we start doing any sort of building work. So let's just have a look, see if we've laid enough there. That's the summit, you can clearly see that. And we need to measure from here. 321 metres, so we've passed that already, it's there somewhere. There it is. So that's the end of the 1 in 150 downhill. Uh, let's see what the next gradient is. It's 370 metres, 337 metres at 262 downhill. But before we do that, we'll put that summit in that we were uh, just working on up here. So we can go into there, select the track, and I'm going to carry this over the entire summit. 
so that you get a nice leveled off summit. Oh Christ, it's gone off. There you go. So we'll get a nice leveled off summit now there. Like that. To the point where you don't actually really see this here from this angle almost looks level. You just think this is level, but it's actually really steeply downhill. Or rather steeply downhill. Um yeah, we've smoothed those gradients off. From Wakefield now, we've laid a fair distance, look. Not, not quite uh, halfway yet to, not, to Nottingham. We're about halfway to Featherstone, I would say. So, again, it was 337 metres. At minus 262 next. We'll lay that. And then there's a curve here. And this is where Charleston Collier used to be. You can clearly see uh, the line used to go up there into the Collier. There used to be some sidings and stuff. And, uh, it was actually up until the early 90s. You can see there where the curve went in. Uh, and the loaders and stuff were over here. And per personal, I don't remember that many trains coming out of there. I was born in 91. I do remember seeing a load hall 56 coming across uh, the road crossing here. When it started gates and stuff on and everything, the gates actually remained until about 10 years ago. Um, that's the only train I can really recall ever seeing coming out there. 56 on HAAs. Uh, the scenery you can see up there, by the way, that's an interesting point, is Normanton. That's on the Manchester to Leeds line, so you can sort of see how close all this is in relation to each other. Quite often, you can, when I take while taking photos, you can get a photo of a train at Normanton here. You can actually get across back towards Featherston to take a photo of it after it's gone round. If it goes around Wakefield, you can actually go and get two photos of it in the space of a few minutes. So we'll just carry this on round here. Uh, I'm going to lower the track terrain sorry, again so that we can clearly see what we're doing. There's a uh, unit on Google Maps there. That'll be a lead to Nottingley service. Or Nottingley to Leeds service, rather. Or Depending on how old the footage is, it could be a not like a Wakefield service. The stations on this line were actually completely closed in 1967. They didn't reopen until 1992. And the very really basic stations, the wooden like uh, wooden platforms on these stations. So we're going to get them hopefully custom made by uh, Will or Callum or both, depending on who's available. Pretty basic stations to be honest. So we're coming up to the crossing now. And we're obviously going to have gone through where 260, uh, 337 metres was. So we need to work out where that was. There. And I'll always cut the track back short to where it needs to be. I'm not going to. So that's 337 metres here. Now, what some people would say is, why don't I just now. Go to the end there and work out what the gradient should be and do use the arrows. I will never use the arrows unless I really, really, really have to. I always rather cut the trap back and redo the bit that I've gone over on. Because if you start using arrows, you put yourself in real danger of messing up your entire route's gradients. So, and by arrows, I mean these ones. Don't really ever use these unless you have to. It's a pretty golden rule, to be honest. It's so bugged and messy, and what damage it can do to a route. You're much better off just spending the extra time having to go back and do stuff. So now we're going on to a minus 144 section gradient for 756 metres, so minus 144. And again, uh, selecting that, I'm going to have to redo this curve, and I'm quite annoyed about that in some ways because I had actually just done it quite well, but that'll teach me to miscalculate where the end of the uh, curve should have been. This actually used to be a really sharp curve in steam days and early diesel days as well. When the pit was still up and they used to have um, check rails and all sorts on this curve because of how, how sharp it was. Um, about 20 mile an hour curve. It's now 50 mile an hour. Um, and I think it's super elevated now as well. Well, it is super elevated now, it is. Uh, as far as I know. So that's what, probably one of the reasons it's now much faster than it ever was before, I suspect. We're just going to put this curve in now. 
And then we've got a really long straight actually from here down towards Featherstone. So this is a street house where we are at the minute. One of the poshest places in Yorkshire. I joke. It's actually a lot better than it used to be around here. I mean, days gone by. The street house really wasn't a very pleasant place, but these days it's not special, but it's not nasty as such. It was a really bad place for... Uh, generally in the uh, steam days and stuff some of the stories that my dad's got about this area because he grew up around this sort of area um, such a change to how we know life these days um, I'm messing up the uh, track again on this straight. So I'm going to have to work out again where the straight needs to start. Again, I might have to cut the video here just so I can work it out once again because it's really proven to be awkward. a bit more positive. It's not going to be right, it's going to have to go back again but it's getting there slowly. like it might work a bit better so again I'm going to completely chop the terrain out here by knocking it really low and that's just again so I can see where I'm actually putting the track there's a, a the track levels out down here is actually where there used to be a lot of flooding and it sort of climbed back up again as you get up the other side It climbs up, then it goes over the hill towards Pontifax. So you can sort of see the hills in the distance as to where it'll go eventually. So this is coming down towards um, Snyder, where we're going through now. That's the Limpac Plastics place on the right. And they used to be collieries all the way down this section in the uh, old days. I'm just checking. All I'm doing here is I'm, this is an actual track lane. All I'm doing here is just feeding it along to check if we've got the right trajectory on the straight. So I don't want to get all the way down here and then find out, oh crap, doing all the right gradients, then cut all the way to the end of the straight and find, oh dear, I didn't do the straight the right length. Or, you know, I, was, I didn't make the curve go um, east enough or whatever. So this is just. Driving the track to the end of the straight to check it's in a straight line. And then it's going to be a case of going back and redoing the gradients. Which I don't mind doing at all. So I'd much rather do that than have to mess about with gradients after and whatever. So you can see we've got all the way along here. And we're pretty much on the right trajectory. We might be about half a metre off maybe. And if you go into Google you could go, oh yeah, that's, that's slightly off. But really when you're driving the route you aren't going to notice that at all. And the worst crime you can commit possibly when you're doing stuff like this is to try and bring this, correct it halfway down the straight. So what you could do is you could correct that. If you got it wrong, you can correct it halfway down the straight by putting a fictional curve in. And that sort of thing it's just uh, makes it look really bad because you end up with curves when there shouldn't be curves on straights and stuff like that. 
And don't get me wrong, I've made these mistakes myself loads of times, because that's how I've learned not to do them again. Um, and, you know, when I started track line 10, 15, well, not 15 years ago, 10, 12 years ago, about 10, 11 years ago, something like that. You have to, it takes ages to learn. I'm still learning. I'm not, I'm not perfect at track by any means. I'm not that good at it at all, actually. I'm, I'm really not proud of my track skills. There's some things I can't do. Um, I mean, this sort of thing, I've only learned in the last sort of year or two how to super elevate properly and everything. And even then, there's still stuff I'm fully not confident with in it. But you've just got to keep trying and trying and trying and trying because you'll make errors. And your first route will never be your best route. And you'll never do your best route because, you, you know, like me, I'm still improving. Um, 10 years now in route editor, minimum. Maybe it's 11, I think it's 11, 12. And still learning stuff every day nearly uh, about various bits. And that's kind of why I love Train Sim, to be honest. It's just enjoyable to be able to do that. And, uh, you know, 16,000 hours in the game and still learning. It's There's not many games where you could still be doing that after all these hours, but Train Sim is one of those. Uh, it's uh, constantly a learning process. That's why I love it. So now we've got level track after I've finished gibbering. 628 metres to come now a level track. So we've deleted all track back along the straight. We know it's going to be in the right position because we've just checked it. So, so we've got 628 metres of level track. So 500, and then another 128. So there. And then we've got 320 metres of minus 368. And what this is, is this is where it's dipping down under that road that I mentioned. So we've got minus 368 in the gradient box, and it's, I said, 320 metres, and we'll do all that in one hit. Uh, 320 metres is there. Next gradient is 288 uphill for 257 metres, so 288 for 257 metres. there and that's been a fairly simple bit and we're still going along the straight so we'll carry on for now and then we'll go back and we'll smooth all the gradient changes off so next up one in 159 for 850 for 885 meters Actually, that's not 885 metres. I've made a mistake there. So that's how easy it is to make a mistake in my calculations. I've actually missed a mile of grading off. And that's what I was thinking. That's why it's important to also know your route knowledge. Because I've only noticed I've made that mistake because I have knowledge of the route. Um, just bear with me because I'm doing some maths. Brain's hurting already. 2,728. So instead of being 894 metres, 885 metres, sorry, it's 2,494 metres that it should be at 1 in, five, one in 159 uphill. So that shows the scale of the error that I just made there. And then, well, I just said, always making mistakes. The way I would have noticed I'd made the mistake there, though, is because the track would have been miles under the terrain. A big error like that, you would notice it. Whereas it should actually be pretty much level with the ground around here, um, which it sort of is more or less. It should come out onto an embankment as we come across here. I'm just going to lay to the end of this straight for now though. What we'll do then is we'll come back, we'll fix this terrain first before we lay any more track. So we're going to do the gradient changes. So the smoothing of the gradients. Might leave the terrain actually because it's going to need speeds and stuff doing on it first as well. So this gradient change, oh we've done that again. So we need to select it like both tracks, and then go along it, 
416 meters there. It's going to be a nice, easy uh, change ingredient there. You don't see it at all, really. There's a bit that I didn't do there as well. Look. So that's on the back side of that uh, summit that we did before that we've not leveled off. Again, as I said in episode one, any questions about why I've done something or why I've not done something, or if you've got any tips, then please do drop them in. Um, Same way, any questions as to what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, what I'm planning to do, stuff like that. Happy to try and answer. And if you've got any things you like to show me to, you know, like me to emphasise on when I'm showing in the next episode or a future episode, and again, just give me a shout in the comments and I'll try and remember. So again, we've got another change ingredient there. Now these ones along here, I do know that these ones are quite pronounced because as you're coming along, um, if you stand at a foot crossing, it's just about there, there's a little farm crossing. You can actually see how much it dips here and then climbs back up again. You really see the sort of uh, changes in the gradient in real life. It's like a roller coaster. As you can see from Street House Station, you can see all the way to Featherstone. Um, by the right at the end where the station is, there's a curve at Featherstone. But otherwise, you can see all the way down. There again, we've done that bit. And we've got one more little bit to do on here. And then we'll carry on with the track. I think it's going to be the most sensible solution. And we've got about 20 minutes of this episode left. I reckon in 20 minutes we can get this trap most of the way to Pontefract. Looking at it. So we got this curve that we need to start. So on this tile particularly, I'm going to reset the terrain now. I'm just going to set it for 3x3 three three so it's all around this area that gets reset. So now you can sort of see the track's just above the uh, actual terrain, not that 20 metres above it like it was before. Feverson's quite a hilly place. It's um, Rugby pitch is actually famous that where Featherstone Rovers play. Um, here. The pitch is actually on a really steep hill towards the railway. Uh, quite famous for Hill and Rugby League terms. It's one that players are always on about when they come to play against Featherstone on about if you're pillar down or whatever. Actually makes a difference in the game. I'm just going to lower this bit to track level so that we can see it a bit easier. Because we're going uphill again now rather than downhill. We actually have to bring the track terrain closer again. Change it to passenger. Again, we're still on this 1 in 159 gradient because this ends right up past Featherstone. The gradient ends halfway between Featherstone and Pontefract, basically. And this will be another really long straight to come, so it's probably going to be another difficult one to master. I can't remember if I actually said in one of these episodes, but this way filter not in there will be a standalone free route. It's not going to be a paid route. It will probably get thrown on to Manchester Slays, that's the intention. Um, when we release that as a merged route but you have to pay any extra for it because it'll be as I said a freebie I would like to take it through to Drax maybe even Ghoul, who knows certainly I'd like to take it through to Drax though because that can give a lot of uh, variety in terms of uh, scenarios and stuff See how we're doing here. This time it looks a little bit better. 
we're going a bit yeah we're going a bit far right look as we go along there that's going to end up way far right towards the end unfortunately so I need to come back left a bit more Taking off into space here because we're going into Pontifact and we should be going downhill and we're going uphill still. Because the straight is so long. But you can see we're, we're way off in terms of how the. Uh, we'll actually come to the end of the dem as well. But we're well off in terms of the straight. It's still too far to the right. So it's going to have to come uh, back in a little bit more on the left hand side. This last end of it. Now we've got it coming too far over. <laughs> Can't write it. Can't write it. It's just one of them things. Once again, that's why group building can be a frustrating thing, especially when it comes to track lane. Uh, but at the end of the day, track lane is the one thing that really we've got to try and get right because it's the whole point of the sim isn't it really the track <laughs> without track that's decent then it's not really a decent route unfortunately and let's have a look at that see what we're looking like that's pretty much spot on so we've got a spot on this time so what we can do is we can go back to the end of the straight and we can do like we did on the last straight, we can um, work out gradients and stuff. I know there's something that's halfway along that straight anyway. So we know the straight starts here. And the gradient here is still 1 in 159 anyway. Till well upon up here, it goes into a cutting really. Just here somewhere. We might have got far enough now, pretty much. And this coin just links Wakefield and, well, Pontefract and Featherston, sorry. Featherston's an old mining town. Mining town? Mining town, we're talking about. Interesting little station because it's got split platforms. One side, either side of the crossing, there's a subway goes underneath as well. It's actually where my, uh, my old man grew up. He grew up. Lived in that house there, so he lived there for about 40 odd years. And before this row of houses was built, he could actually see the railway and these memories of 8Fs and stuff climbing up this gradient, which is a bit different to my memories when I used to go when it was obviously my grandma's house. And I remember 56s and 60s, particularly 56s, screaming up here on this one in 159 uh, when they had loaded MGR trains going to. Um, Ferrybridge and Drax and Eggerborough. The noise they used to make screaming up here was just incredible. A noise I'll never forget. Fond memories. So we got this one in 159, as I said. We're going to work out exactly where we're starting this from. It's wherever the. There'll be a yellow line across the track somewhere here. And that's where the gradient needs to start, the one in 159. And it needs to go on for 2,494 metres. So let's have a look. I've gone a bit further than it actually is. That's where the summit should be. Much like the other summit that we did earlier, it's quite a faced summit. It's not a steep one like the one at Crofton is. It's quite a 
sort of shallow one. But it is quite noticeable in the uh, to the sense that when you see a train going over, you can't see you sort of just see it appear over the hill when you're in Featherstone. You don't see it come from a, a long distance, or you just see the top of it sort of peak over eventually. So you got a level track for 112 meters. Now, so that's what we're getting next. And then I think we'll wrap this episode two up, and we'll start episode three, which will be uh, more track lane. We'll probably have another two episodes of main track lane, and then we'll start with sidings and stuff. So we got 112 meters of this. Use your brain, man. Why don't you bloody just level it off like I've been doing all the rest of the time? I'm faffing out here. Christ. And I can't wait to work it out. So that's, that's the summit. And then going down the other side, 2,333 metres of minus 150. So it's minus 150. I'm going to need to mess with the terrain again here because it's going to be way underground. But we'll be fixing that in a minute anyway because we've got this um, point where the terrain obviously ends. We've got to put more in. Quite a steep cut in this one, in real life as well. That's 500 meters. That's a thousand meters. That's 1,500 meters. One thousand nine hundred fifty-three meters to there. I'm just going to note that down on my. Excel sheet so that I know how far I've gone into that. So 1953 meters into that section that I've gone. Next, we need to get the terrain tiles here. Now, we've got to be careful, we can't go onto the full extent of the terrain tiles because with the dem tiles because the Manchester Leeds was only there. So, we can't go like putting 16 by 16 tiles here. Uh, we're gonna to have to do it by a short, uh, a smaller margin. So, probably 7 by 7 is going to be a safer amount. Let's take a look. We'll find that all the trap back through Featherstone is buried now. So yeah, we've still got the terrain, everything there, so that's all good. That's what we like. Um, now I've lost the track. Here it is. So we're going to here, and we get the track. We can see we've come out onto an embankment here at um, Pontefract. So it sort of drops away quite rapidly. So how much have we got left to lay? We've got three hundred and eighty meters left of this one in minus one fifty to lay. And we're going on to this curve. So this curve will lead us around to Pontefract Monk Hill. We've already taken the track through Tan Shelf Station just behind us. And it's honestly quite a steep gradient this one. When the Preston Docks tanks get diverted this way, they make a right racket with a pair of 56s climbing up here. So we'll put that on the passenger setting because we put it on main line then and it didn't really work out very well. So we'll put it on passenger. Should make it easier to transition out of the curve because you can do it in shorter spells. I think I'm going to leave that for episode. I'm going to leave that and uh, do that bit before episode three. So yeah, that's episode two. As you can see, it's a long old process doing track work. We're getting onto it now. We're getting into it nicely. We've only got about three or four miles to go to Nottingley. Um, hope you're enjoying and learning something. Hopefully, 
If there's any questions you've got, don't forget to put them in the chat in the uh, comments. Sorry. And uh, sorry, I'm tired. <laughs> Please do like, comment, subscribe. We appreciate your support as always. Don't forget, Tom's usually live on Twitch, Train Team TV, Twitch on TV, forward slash Train Team TV underscore Tom. He's usually live Tuesdays and Saturdays, 8 p.m. And remember to check out episode three, guys. We'll be moving on to doing some more interesting stuff soon. I promise you. Um, at the moment, we're just getting this feeder lines in. Cheers for watching, guys. Bye.